What's up guys, T-Max here, and have you ever wondered how the big guys like PewDiePie and Markiplier and Jacksepticeye get that weird, wavy, smooth look to some of their thumbnails? Such as this one from PewDiePie's Goat Simulator series. Notice how it has this oily, wavy look to it. As well as this one, notice the waves and the oil light look. And notice here on one of Markiplier's thumbnails. Take a good look at the right side of his jaw. Not only is his skin very smooth, but you can notice that his facial hair is somewhat wavy. Well, for two years, I wasn't sure how they did this. And I tried a few different things and it didn't work, but I have figured it out. And today I want to show you how to do that in Photoshop CC 2015. How would you like to turn a simple, unsaturated, unentertaining photo of a goat like this into something like this. More vibrance, more contrast, more color, smoothed out. Or how would you like to turn pitiful photos of yourself that are pixelated and blurry into smooth, colorful photos like this? First things first, go ahead and take whatever picture you're gonna touch up and let's open a new project. You can hold down Control, Alt, and N, name it whatever you want to, and make sure the dimensions are width 1280, height 720. Those are the dimensions for a YouTube thumbnail. The resolution I set to 300, and you can also, once you put this in, you could save it as a preset. As you can see, I've already done that and I named it YouTube thumbnail. So I could just bring it up and it goes ahead and fills in the dimensions for me. When you're ready, press OK. And now we have our new project and then you can go ahead and import your picture into it. Today we're gonna to be working on two photos, one picture of me, an old one from my webcam, a Logitech C920, of not very good quality, but I'm gonna to try to redeem it. And then a picture of a goat in a field. You may recognize this picture because it's the same picture that PewDiePie used in one of his goat simulator videos. First things first, if you wanna use something like a picture of yourself to put into a thumbnail, go ahead and make your selection and cut out your background. If you don't know how to do that, I made a video on it. You can go down in the description and look for the link to the playlist called Tutorials. Just a quick tip, my favorite is the Quick Selection tool. You can choose it by pressing W. And as you can see, it selects me pretty dang quick. A quick tip when you're taking any photo of yourself and trying to put it into a thumbnail, especially when you're removing your background, the higher the resolution, the more megapixels, the easier it's gonna be for Photoshop to determine what is subject what is background? And that is really gonna help in the cutting out the background process. Now I made my selection and I touched it up just a little bit and this is kind of the, not the end result, but as you can see, because it's not such a high quality picture, it has selected some of my background with my subject being me. High resolution photos will help you avoid this issue. To touch up the borders of your selection a little bit, you can go to your layer mask, double click, Go to Mask Edge, and it's going to bring up Refine Mask. This is going to adjust the borders of the mask. I usually like to set Radius to 0.2, Smooth to 2, Contrast to 2, and Shift Edge, negative 2. I usually use that and then press this and then go in and kind of do a little touch up. It helps separate your subject from your background. After that step in the process, I like to go to the brushes, get a solid circle brush, Go up here to the brush setting and drop the hardness to about 30%. I then zoom in and manually kind of work back the border until I'm happy. Because you put the hardness on about 30%, it's not just a strict cut cut. It's a smooth transition from your subject to your background. Notice how it smoothly blends out the blue and gets to my hair. Another good place is like my fingertips. As you can see, it still captured a little blue. I'm just gonna go in manually, just kind of work it back some. Some of these border issues can be resolved by not having to go in and manually do this. You can do kind of a decent job, and then when you add an outer glow, that could kind of hide it. Okay, here's a prime example of an issue with Photoshop and making the selections, especially with a poor quality photo. As you can see, it has left out some of my finger here because my finger was quite bright and so is the background. So I thought it was background and cut it out. But just like we can work the border back towards our subject, we can work the border out away from our subject. There, much better. There. Now, is that selection perfect? No, but it is much better than what we started off with. 
The next step is to take this picture and convert it into a smart object. But because maybe one day we want to take the original photo, which is this, and use it for something else, including the background, we want to make a copy, then make that copy into a smart object. Oh, and a quick tip, the way that you can reveal the layer mask is you hold down shift and you just click the layer mask that both hides and reveals it if you hold down alt that shows you where it is activated and deactivated white is where the layer mask is revealed black is where the layer mask is hidden so an easy way to convert this into a smart object and make a copy is to go and right click on the line and then find new smart object via copy we can then right click the copy and say convert to smart object the reason we want to do this now is because when we start adding filters to it, we will be able to adjust the filters versus we add the filter and then we're not able to adjust the filter. We want to be able to adjust this filter. In a second, you'll understand why. Once you've made the copy into a smart object, go up top to filter, stylize, and then oil paint. If you do not have Photoshop CC 2015, I do not know if oil paint is there, but it took me two years to find where it was because I really wasn't even sure what it was called. So let's go ahead and click on oil paint to apply it. Immediately you see that it adds the smoothness as well as these lines into it. You have a few options to choose from. You have stylization, cleanliness, scale, bristle detail, and then a second section called lighting with its angle and shine. You wanna go ahead and uncheck lighting, why? Because if you have lighting on, you bring it up, it has this crazy pastel look to it. This is what's gonna make it look like an oil painting and not necessarily a smoothing effect. This scale and bristle detail, these are associated with the lighting. If we bring up scale, that makes these grooves larger. If we bring up bristle detail, that adds more detail to the grooves. We don't want grooves, we want smooth. So bring scale and bristle detail down to zero and uncheck lighting and then it will have the smoothing effect. All you're left with is stylization and cleanliness and you can pretty much just work around with these two and turning the preview on and off until you have your desired effect. If you bring either one up too high, it will blur the picture out a whole bunch and it will just look really weird. Okay, I've decided that stylization at 2.5 and cleanliness at 3.5 is pretty much where I'm gonna leave this. So I'm gonna press OK. The oil paint smart filter is now applied to the smart object copy of our picture. If we had not made it into a smart object, this section would not have appeared and we wouldn't be able to one readjust how much of the oil paint is applied to the picture and we wouldn't be able to click on the layer mask and adjust where it is applied to the picture and how much now remember layer masks work in black and white hide and reveal just like the selection here you see that i am completely white 100 white 100 revealed and the background is 100% black, 100% hidden. If there were ever to be something between white and black, it would be a slight reveal or a slight hiding. To show an example, come over here and select maybe a gray, like about 50% of the way. Select layer mask and then just draw across. When we take a look at what that actually looks like, there we go, a little weird. Now part of my face and part of the background are not completely hidden and not completely revealed. There's somewhere in between. When we restore it to a completely hidden, completely revealed, it looks all right. So T-Max, why are you telling us this? Because this oil paint filter looks great. It smoothed everything out, but there are a few places we don't want to be completely smoothed out. Which areas? Our eyes. So we're gonna hide the oil paint filter about 25% over our eyes, maybe even our eyebrows and our hair to keep them a little sharper than everything else. The way to do that is to go down and select the layer mask for the oil paint. Press B to activate your brush. Press D to bring the white and black 100% back. And you can switch between these two by pressing X, 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 X. The one on top is the one you have selected. White is selected, now black is selected. White is reveal, black is hide. Once you've pressed B and you have the brush selected, come over here and we wanna select about a quarter way down. To get a good selection of the eye, Let's zoom in, adjust our brush size to the desired size, and then always make sure to come up here and reduce the hardness. You want a smooth transition from what's blurred and what's less blurred. So after you have your brush and it's about 25% gray and about 30% hardness, we're going to encircle the eye just like this. When we check out the layer mask, there we go. It has a smooth transition and it's gray. We're gonna zoom in 
and we're just going to fill it in. What's the difference you ask? Well, you can hold down shift and then click on the layer mask and it shows you that it is a little bit sharper than what's around it. I'm gonna go ahead and do this for my other eye and I may do it for my hair. I kind of drew an afro over my hair just to make sure that I got it all. But if you want to quickly fill this in, you can come over here and go to gradient tool. Go right below it to paint bucket tool. Click that and then just click. And booyah! Make sure that it's the same color though. And yes, I know it didn't fill in these little lines right here, but you can click again and booyah it does. Or you can take your brush and manually just run through the line. Here's an example of what something may look like when you have it completely hidden versus something that's completely blurred. See, my hair goes back to being this gritty, pixelated look because the oil filter is completely hidden from it. When it's 100% revealed over my hair, booyah, it smooths that out to this nice, smooth comic book look. To quickly kind of adjust how much percentage is hidden or revealed, you can bring the bucket back out and then just choose different colors from 100% revealed to 100% hidden. Let's try about 10% hidden. All right, I think that looks good. I don't think it's too much oil. I think it's just enough. If I was smiling, I probably would have wanted to hide some of the oil filter over my teeth like I did for my eyes. You're free to now add any kind of adjustments you want to it. I like to use brightness and contrast as well as vibrance and sat. Remember to hold down the alt key and then click in between the locks right here so that it applies these effects only to the layers below them, which is this one. It won't be applying it to any backgrounds or layers that are underneath whatever you're working on. Something else I like to do to pictures of myself to kind of warm the picture up a little bit so I don't look so pale or washed out is to click on the picture and then go up here to photo filter and choose the warming filter and just kind of work it back and forth until you're just the right amount of warm. I think that looks pretty good right there. But as you notice, it also changed the whites of my eyes. I don't like that. How can we change that back white by keeping everything else warmed up? Simple. Same thing we did with the oil paint filter. We find the photo filter, click over into its layer mask, choose how much we want to reveal or hide the filter. I'm gonna go ahead and choose about 90% hidden. We again make sure that the hardness is about 30 and then I'm going to encircle my eyes. Go ahead and fill in the circles. What does the difference look like? You would want to do that same thing for the whiteness of your teeth because if you warm the picture it would also warm your teeth then your teeth will look kind of yellow just like my eyes look yellow so while this picture was not the best with those adjustments and the oil filter i was able to change this picture into this one pretty big difference when you take a look at it putting me on top of it with the background I think I did a great job with that. I think you would agree. If you have low quality photos, you can use this to kind of restore them. It also works when you try to get a poor quality picture off the internet to put in your thumbnails. The oil filter effect can kind of smooth it out and save it. Because if it's not very big or high in resolution, it's going to look gritty and pixelated like this one did. But as you can see, you can save it. Now for the goat picture. First things first, I'm going to right click, new smart object via copy, go to the copy, and then convert to smart object. Select the copy, go to filter, stylize, and oil paint. It's using the settings from when we used to change that picture of me up, and as you can already see, it's looking pretty smoothed out and pretty neat. We do want to tweak it a bit because we don't want to look too weird, but if that's what you're going for, then cool. Okay, so I put stylization about two and cleanliness at about one. Here's the difference between the two. So it smoothed it out enough to just melt the fur together a little bit and everything does seem a lot smoother taking a look at the grass i don't really like that so that would be kind of selective masking i would select the layer mask choose a brush make sure it's at about 30 percent hardness and then choose somewhere along here maybe at about 25 percent hidden draw around the borders Press Alt and then click on the layer mask to kind of see what I've chosen out. Press G to get the bucket and click and then come over here and click and then B to get the brush out and just kind of fill in the lines. There. Now the grass doesn't look so swirly, but it's still smoothed over. And then of course, like I always like to do, I like to add brightness and contrast in a vibrant sat layer. Hold down Alt, click on the lines so that it's applied only to 
the picture you're working on. And here's a little tip. If you want to kind of condense up your layer section here, click the first layer and then your last layer, hold down shift click and selects all the layers pertaining to that picture. Hold down control, press G and it forms a group. You can now click here and it's all just kind of hidden. Look how much less room that's taken up now. You can click on the name and title it whatever you want. I'm just going to call it Goat Blur. I'm going to tweak these two adjustments. So I started off with this picture of a goat, pretty bland, it's a little faded out, not much color. I applied the oil paint filter, the brightness and contrast, and the vibrance and sat, and this is what we ended up with. It's smoother, higher contrast, a lot more vibrant color, without and with, without and with. And if you wanted to go in and maybe reduce the oil paint effect on the eyes, I've already told you how to do that. So all in all, I think it was a pretty good project here and I hope that you learned something. I hope that it comes into effect and you can make some great thumbnails. And please, please, please make sure to save yourself time. You watched me spend a pretty good amount of time altering this picture of me and making it worth something. Why not save that work for future projects? Over here, I have a Photoshop project of just pictures of me. Me and me and me already touched up and ready to use in other thumbnails. Pretty easy to do that. As you can see, this is the group with me. Right click it and you can go to duplicate group and then you can just send it to, for instance, me to me and OK. And booyah, it's in the me project so that I can use it whenever I want for a future project. All right, guys, well, I hope that helped you out. I know that me finding out about this filter is really going to help me amp up my thumbnails. And please, I worked really hard on making this video and I know it's going to help you out. So please leave a like and subscribe to help me out. Now, this was a cartoony blur. If you want to learn how to do a more realistic blur, kind of like how Jack Septicai did here, where it's not wavy and oily and everything, but a more realistic blur, I'm going to make a video for that as well. The link to my tutorial playlist will be in the description below. Thanks again for watching, guys. I hope you have a great day. And until next time, T-Max out.